Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you for joining us again in our next discussion of statistics. Jumping into our objective then, we need to explain the sources of bias in sampling. Well first that means we need to discuss what is bias. And bias occurs when the results of the sample are not representative of the population. Usually people think that bias means that someone chose to do this or that and that's not necessarily the case. It simply means that our sample results do not match the population results. Now there are three sources of bias, sampling bias, non-response bias, and response bias. Sampling bias occurs when the technique used to obtain the individuals to be in the sample tends to favor one part of the population over another. Non-response bias occurs when individuals selected to be in the sample who do not respond to the survey have different opinions from those who do. That is, we know we can't get everyone to respond to some survey we're trying to collect. What happens is when those who don't respond have a different opinion from those who do, we end up with a misrepresentation, which again would be our bias. And third, we have a response bias. Now this happens when the answers on a survey do not reflect the true feelings of the respondent. This is a scenario where we're asking people questions and they feel like they're not able to respond truthfully or for whatever reason they do not respond truthfully. Therefore, we end up with a bias because our sample results, again, don't represent the population. Digging a bit deeper, we have a few different types of response bias. First would be interviewer error, where the interviewer himself makes some sort of mistake. This tends to throw people off a bit because they think response bias means that people are lying and it's the only option. Instead, if the interviewer makes an error, it's possible that the respondent doesn't understand a question or something along those lines and the fault falls on the interviewer, causing the response bias. Next would be misrepresented answers, where our respondent does not answer something truthfully or as straightforward as what we want. Third would be the words used in a survey question that can throw people off, and this leads to some sort of response bias. And last would be the order of the questions, or the words within the question that can lead someone to create a response bias. For example, the way I word a question makes people feel guilty, so they don't answer honestly, Instead, that leads to misrepresented answers, but it started with the words within the question that led to the response bias. And one more little aspect then would be the idea of undercoverage. Undercoverage exists when the proportion of one segment of the population is lower in a sample than it is in the population. This can also cause misleading results. For example, let's say we have a class made up of 70% females and 30% males. Well, if we conduct a survey where I ask five females and five males, that actually causes a possible issue of undercoverage because the 50-50 split does not represent the population of 70 to 30 females to males. And lastly, let's discuss sampling error versus non-sampling error. First, non-sampling error are errors that result from sampling bias, non-response bias, response bias, data entry error, basically everything we just discussed. To de-stats this a little bit, these are basically the errors that make us pretty sad, meaning we try to minimize these errors through quality statistical procedures. It's not necessarily the fault of the process. Instead, it typically means that we may have done something wrong. On the other hand, we have sampling error. This would be error that results from using samples to estimate information about a population, meaning we know we can't gather the entire population information, so we're using this sampling approach. As a result, we know the results can be a little bit different than what the true population is. This is because a sample gives incomplete information about a population. We don't get to hear from everyone if we're doing a survey. This error is expected and typically we calculate it. We call this as acceptable because it's typically unavoidable to some degree. The idea here is we know we're ready for it. We know this can happen. It is different than non-sampling error where we are trying to minimize these errors through our quality procedures. And that wraps up our discussion on bias and sampling.